Welcome and good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for being here and being part of the Big Bold Jewish Climate Festival. You are here for spiritual audacity and bold political action. What is a Dianu Circle and how to start one? I am Vicki Kaplan, the Director of Organizing at Dianu, and I'll be your host for the next hour. Um, I am so excited today to be joined by four dynamic Dianu Circle leaders who will share their experiences, their motivations, their tips. Um, those are uh, Lisa Cowan of the congregation Beth Elohim Dianu Circle in Brooklyn, New York, Sophia Sharon from the ECAR Green Team Dianu Circle in Los Angeles, California, Micah Lesh of the Berkeley Hillel Dianu Cir Circle in Berkeley, California, and Cynthia Hirsch of the Madison Dianu Circle in Madison, Wisconsin, and also one of the newest Dianu Circles. We'll also get to hear from Sarah Rockford, rabbinical student at the Jewish Theological Seminary and the Organizing and Leadership Development Fellow with Dainu about upcoming opportunities. Wherever you are, whatever you are just coming from, you are so welcome here. I'm so grateful that you've made the choice to be here. Um, together, we can build a vibrant, growing, bold and beautiful Jewish climate movement. Um, you can enable captions um, by clicking the captions icon, the live transcript icon at the bottom of your Zoom screen. And we are recording this meeting for future reference. Um, we are gathered here because we are saying enough, enough of climate destruction. And we have enough, Dainu, we have what it takes to build a better future. Um, I want to invite everybody to introduce yourselves in the chat. Um, I think it's actually set up so that the hosts and the speakers will be able to see. I'm not sure you'll all be able to see um, each other's introductions, but it's really helpful for us as the speakers and panelists to know um, who's in the room today. So um, I invite you to share, uh, to introduce yourself in the chat with your name, your pronouns, if you'd like, um, your town or your city, and if you're part of a community where you're thinking of starting a Dianu Circle. It's great to know who is here. Um, and here's our agenda for the next uh, 55 minutes or so. Um, we are uh, walking a familiar Jewish path, uh, making the road by walking it, facing fears, charting a necessary path forward together. So I'll share a little bit about what is the Dainu Circle and um, how to get started, and a little bit about Dainu as an organization. Then Sophia, Micah, Lisa, and Cynthia will share some of their experiences and tips from their recent efforts. Then we'll have time for questions and answers from the audience. And we'll close with upcoming opportunities and next steps. Um, and I love seeing the introductions in the chat from Woodstock, New York, Tinton Falls, New Jersey, Sacramento, California, Massachusetts, Portland, Oregon, um, Oakland, California, Washington University. Wonderful. Thank you all for being here. Great to meet you um, and keep those introductions coming. All right, let's get into what is the Dainu Circle. Um, and as I'm, as we're all speaking, I encourage you um, to jot down notes and questions for the Q&A session. Um, or you can go ahead and use the Q&A feature in Zoom. Um, and we'll review those as we get to the Q&A. So what is a Dainu Circle? Dainu Circles are small groups of people working together on climate action, motivated by Jewish tradition, ritual, values, and stories. And what do we mean by climate action? At Dainu, we mean systemic structural solutions to the climate crisis. We seek to reach net zero greenhouse gas emissions well before 2050 and to build a world that is just, equitable and livable for all people for generations to come. We understand that this is what science and justice demand. We operate with a shared set of principles which we'll look at together shortly. These shared principles allow Dainu Circles to have autonomy 
while working towards shared goals. A group of three people anywhere that share these principles really can be a die in your circle. And we're building an intergenerational movement. Die in your circles are rooted in congregations, on college campuses, at JCCs, at youth groups and young adult groups, in neighborhoods, or even a group of friends. And this photo um, that you uh, just saw on the last screen there, yep is from a Hear the Call action in Brooklyn um, this past summer with 250 people and Senate Majority Chuck Schumer during the Days of Awe last year, um, calling for Senator Sh Schumer to show courage and fight for the passage of the Build Back Better Act, uh, which would be the biggest investment in action uh, to confront the climate crisis that we've had in this country and that we continue to fight for. And you'll hear more about that um, from Lisa and others. Dianu circles are a way for you to make powerful, positive change with the Jewish voice, and also to make friends, build relationships, build deeper ties in our communities um, and across communities as well. There are, I'm really excited to say, there are now um, 61 Dianu circles and counting. Um, I think there's even a couple more that launched this week. That number could be even higher. Um, across 18 states and the District of, of Columbia. I think that's even 19 states since yesterday. Uh, and uh, just as many more Dianu circles that are in formation uh, where folks are getting started. Um, and I think that number is gonna even grow today with all of you here. Thanks for being here. And as you'll see further in a moment, uh, Dayenu is focused on large scale systemic solutions to the climate crisis, and therefore we focus on national campaigns. Uh, Dayenu circles can also work on local and state climate action campaigns that are in line with the Dayenu principles. And again, you'll hear about that from um, circle leaders themselves. And actually, I want to point out the photo from the last slide. Um, this was from, uh, these are a few of the more than 800 awesome volunteers who took part in Dainu's Chutzpah 2020 nonpartisan get out the vote campaign during the 2020 elections. Uh, many volunteers who were part of that campaign went on to form Dainu circles. I'd love to zoom out for a moment and just review with you all Dainu's mission. Uh, we were founded in April, 2020. So a little less than two years ago uh, to secure a livable and sustainable world for all people for generations to come by building a multi-generational Jewish movement that is confronting the climate crisis with spiritual audacity and bold political action. We have four parts to our strategy to achieve that mission. The first is to support critical federal and state climate policies. You see that right now in our work to pass the Build Back Better Act. And you can see our founder and CEO, Rabbi Jenny Rosen here uh, with Reverend Barber um, with the Poor People's Campaign um, speaking out um, in recent weeks um, to get through that log jam in that legislation right now and, and seize the moment that we have. Secondly, we mobilize the American Jewish community to act during key political and cultural moments. We engage with candidates and elections to change the political landscape. And we're also part of a multi-year effort to lead a campaign to end the financial backing for the fossil fuel industry that that industry currently enjoys um, as a key to keeping the majority of current and future fossil fuel reserves underground and unburned. We also build relationships across the climate and climate justice movements and we are piloting a spiritual adaptation program to support Jewish people in grappling with the existential crisis of climate change. And we do all of this through Dainu circles with, with people like you in your communities, in our communities across the country. Uh, the shared principles that I referred to earlier, we'll take a, a brief look at those now. Uh, shared principles allow us um, allow groups to have autonomy while working towards shared goals. We agree on our values and our principles that define our movement, um, and that serves as a guide for local action. 
Dainu provides campaign opportunities and tactics. Um, and you can share, you can and you should strategize and make decisions locally for your context that you will know best. Uh, we have nine Dainu principles, which you can find on our website at dainu.org slash principles. And here are three of our principles that I just wanted to highlight uh, for you all today. First, we are focused on systemic and structural solutions to the climate crisis. Um, second, we are committed to equity and justice. We recognize that the climate crisis exacerbates historical inequities, even as, it imp as its impacts spread far and wide to every corner of the world. We believe that the solutions to the crisis must center those who are most impacted and that we are called Tirdof Tzedek to pursue justice. And a third principle I'll lift up today is that we invest in partnerships. We partner closely with other organizations at F and efforts within and beyond the Jewish community at the national level and the local level to help bring the full strength and voice of American Jewish communities to local, national, and global movements. We know that we're all more powerful when we work together. And um, many Dainu circles are jointly affiliated as a con congregational green team or tikkun olam committee um, and with partners like Kazon and the Jewish Youth Climate Movement, Interfaith Power and Light, the Jewish Earth Alliance, the RAC, Jewish Climate Action Network, um, and others, all of whom we're really proud to partner with both on this festival um, and closely at the national level. So I know a lot of people are um, really most curious about where to start. Um, and I know we're gonna hear a lot about that from um, our Dainu Circle leaders today. I'll just share a few tips um, if you're thinking about getting started. And I, I, I have tried to raise wandering Jew plants before. Um, I love these plants, um, but we don't have to wander. We know what to do. We know what the first steps are um, for getting started. As I've spoken with small groups around the country who are forming Dainu Circles, this really has been a recipe for success. Um, first, start small. Think of three people that you know who are concerned about climate change. Make a list, write them down. Um, you're not in this alone. This might be housemates or neighbors or family, classmates. They might be other parents of young children. Maybe they're fellow members of your congregation's uh, tikkun olam committee or green team. Take a moment, write these names down. You can even do this right now while we're talking about it. Uh, make a plan to talk with them. Um, meet them for coffee or a Zoom coffee, um, and share your idea about forming a Dainu circle and taking action together. Hear their thoughts. Uh, don't, don't do this alone. There's no need to do this alone. Um, then uh, you can plan a kickoff meeting. Most likely, these will continue to be over Zoom for the next while. Uh, I'm thinking of um, one Dianu Circle in Boston at Temple Israel of Boston. They uh, titled their kickoff meeting last year as an evening of climate conversations. Uh, Dianu has a sample kickoff meeting agenda on our resource page, which is dianu.org slash circles. And we'll share all these links towards the end um, of our time together today. And then as a bonus, think about roles and action. Um, some roles that Dainu Circles have include a recruitment coordinator, a liaison to the Dainu, Dainu National Organization, a lead for local uh, rela relationships with local allies and climate and frontline organizations, and a social media coordinator. You could form committees. Um, and I know our panelists today will talk a lot about that, especially uh, Cynthia and how the Madison group um, went about sort of developing their core team and roles. And another bonus is um, planning an action together. Um, most of the folks who are involved in Dianu Circles are attracted because they understand uh, the urgency and the importance of the moment that we're in and the need for action, right? And that's also such a great way of building relationships is showing up, painting banners together, um, singing songs together, just being together in public, taking a stand. Um, this helps provide action, or excuse me, uh, momentum, and through action, um, we get to know each other and we get work done. And um, I'll just preview for you all that right now we're working with um, a coalition of groups looking at 
um, national actions around Pesach, around Passover this spring, um, taking on the power of the fossil fuel industry. Um, and then my final piece here, before we watch a short video and then I turn it over to Lisa, um, is just a little bit of what Dainu offers to Dainu Circles. And we continue to build this out as we uh, hear from Dainu Circles and learn about your needs and your interests. Uh, we provide curated strategic national campaigns for bold climate action, like the Hear the Call campaign that you'll hear a little bit more about shortly. Uh, we provide uh, toolkits and resources like how to plan an action, um, a guide for organizing district meetings with your elected officials, uh, a full guide for how to start a Dianu Circle that goes through much of what we're covering today, um, plus teachings and original music to build into your gatherings and ground in Jewish learning and tradition. Uh, we offer trainings, workshops, and briefings. Some examples of this um, are, are taking down Goliath uh, Jewish climate organizing training for 18 to 32 year olds um, that starts uh, a week from today, next Tuesday. Um, Sarah will also share with you an opportunity we have uh, to take uh, the Don't Fetch Organize course with our partners at Join for Justice, the Jewish Organizing um, Institute and Network. Uh, we also offer spiritual adaptation workshops to Dainu Circles um, and more. This is a constant sort of capacity building resource that we provide. Uh, we also are really proud to be building a vibrant community um, and opportunities for you to build relationships and network with other Jewish climate leaders around the country um, and with other climate leaders across the climate and climate justice movements. And we provide coaching and support group coaching, one-on-one -on -one, one meetings with myself and the rest of our team um, and our rabbinical student interns. And now I'd love to play a two minute video showcasing what 24 Dianu Circles teamed up to make happen this past summer in 16 different cities, uh, featuring some of the folks that you'll hear from next. We sound the call for climate action. Takia! States, Jews are showing up at their senator's doorsteps to bring the full power and people of the Jewish community to the existential crisis of our time, the climate crisis. The Jewish communities of Boulder and Denver held a rally today for climate change. We have to make sure Senator Sinema knows what her constituents want, what they demand of her. What we really need to do right now is exactly what we're commanded to do as Jewish people, take the message of climate justice uh, throughout the world, letting it act as a beacon. We are fighting for big, bold action. We have no choice if we care about our globe, if we care about our children, we have no choice. We founded Dayenu to inspire, organize, and mobilize Jews, Jewish communities, and Jewish institutions to confront the climate crisis with spiritual audacity and bold political action. We are building a multi-generational Jewish climate movement doing everything in our power to avert the worst of climate devastation and build a more just and sustainable world for all people for generations to come. Enough, enough climate destruction, enough valuing the fossil fuel industry over human lives, enough letting the impacts of climate change fall disproportionately on black, brown, and indigenous people. Enough. Join us. You can still make this call at dianu.org slash call and involve your communities to do that. We need to call on our senators to pass the Build Back Better Act um, urgently. Um, I'm delighted now to uh, introduce our four Dianu Circle leaders who will speak today. And first we'll hear um, from, I think the very first, a leader of the, the very first Dianu Circle. Um, we'll hear from Lisa Cowan of CBE, Congregation Beth Elohim in Brooklyn, New York. Hi, Lisa. Hi, um, it's quite a title, very first Dianu Circle. Um, 
And let me say that we are uh, the first to make all the mistakes. So if you want advice on how to avoid them, I'm your girl. Um, okay, so I think like many of you, I spent a lot of years um, absolutely terrified of climate change and so scared that the only two options I could imagine were spending every minute of every day fighting it miserably or hiding under my bed. And I could not come up with the right balance. Um, who, who I could work with, what was sort of an appropriate uh, way to get involved. And so, um, and so Dianu came along really right at the right moment for me and for our congregation for Beth Elohim, which is um, in Brooklyn. Um, we started, you know, I think right around the same time Dianu launched and um, and unfortunately, right at the moment that the pandemic kicked off. So we actually had an in-person meeting planned that we had to move on to Zoom. And then the many of the members of our group didn't meet each other until just we had this rally where I'm all sweaty that you see the picture of right there. Um, the very first thing we did was to have that kickoff meeting on Zoom and um, and our rabbi came and did a teaching and we asked people sort of why they were there and what they were interested in. Um, and then from them, we tried a whole bunch of things, um, some some with Diane International and some on our own, um, really trying to build onto the existing infrastructure within the synagogue. So we um, there's a there's a book group in our congregation. And so we co-opted the agenda of the book group and we read a book on climate one month and then had a conversation about it and got to sort of some people there who we might not have otherwise. Um, we were involved with the um, with the chutzpah campaign over the summer, a lot of members of our congregation started making the calls and that was where they figured out what Dayanu was and then we connected with each other. Um, we were part of a multi-circle letter writing campaign to Senator Schumer. We also have the really unhelpfully unreplicable um, advantage of having Chuck Schumer as a member of our congregation. So um, have been able to invite him um, to our rallies and 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 target some of our letters to him as co-congregants. Um, I don't think that's very helpful advice to you, but that is a thing that is true about us. Um, we on on the afternoon of Yom Kippur, we did a discussion group about sort of climate and and themes of the holiday. Um, and our our rab our rabbi uh, Rachel Timoner is our is the, our chief rabbi, and she both of her high holiday sermons were about climate, and so. She gave those sermons and, and she mentioned the Dianu group as a as a place people could follow up on. So all of those were sort of ways people found us. Um, and uh, you'll see in addition to having so that rally was in September and that was sort of our probably our biggest like public moment where where people who were already part of the circle came, people who were part of the wider congregation came and then just people who were in the neighborhood and trying to just go for a bike ride came. Um, and that was really great. And from there, and, and we did that really in concert with Dianu National and, you know, in, in a series with a bunch of other geographies. Then on our own, we partnered with um, uh, the Jewish Youth Climate Movement and um, two of our rabbis and I and a couple of other folks uh, were part of a protest outside of BlackRock and, and were arrested. And so that got a lot of social media attention also um, got in front of more members of the congregation, you know, to sort of varying degrees of um, approval and disapproval, but certainly, you know, got, got a conversation going. Um, and what we're doing now is trying to figure out sort of locally in New York City, in New York State, what are the other campaigns that are going on and, and who do we want to ally with and what do we want to do? And trying to keep that focus on like how do we take advantage of the vision and the resources that Dianu National is offering, but also really build on our existing infrastructure and context. Um, and I think that that so I would just say like maybe three things about uh, to keep in mind as you're starting the the first is that um, that's both an opportunity and a challenge, I think trying to be part of a bigger movement and be your own thing. Um, and that because I think for so many of us, um, climate change is so terrifying, whatever we can do as Dainu circles to kind of 
help people like take off a bite-sized piece, something that is meaningful, but that they can manage. I think that is like an extremely valuable service that, that we can offer is how to think about how to, how to, how to marshal, how to inspire, how to, how to scaffold the work of, of our um, fellow Jews. Um, and the other, the other thing that I think we've had a, have gone back and forth a lot on with different members of the circle is that I think that there's a real tendency to default to like, what can I as an individual do? And we keep having people say, well, let's, let's green our synagogue, let's compost, let's hand down clothes, which are all obviously fine things to do. But I think one of the challenges for us is to be, is to stay really focused on like, what can we do that is bigger than the sum of the parts? What can we do as neighbors, as Jews, as part of a national movement that, that, that affects systems, not just like makes, you know, brings me a little piece as I'm listening to NPR that I'm composting. So I'll, I'll stop there. Thank you so much, Lisa. Really great experience um, and advice. And again, um, as you, as participants here listen along, please share questions that you have for any of our panelists um, in the Q&A feature in Zoom. And now I'm delighted to introduce Sophia Charan, my neighbor here in Los Angeles um, with the ECAR Green Action Diana Circle. Hi, Sophia. Hi, thanks so much uh, for having me uh, on this panel. Yeah, so I, a few years ago, um, was a grad student studying air quality. And uh, during the first, one of the big youth climate strikes, or it was ab about all campuses sort of, um, high schools and also college campuses. And everyone I worked with went around and said, oh, we shouldn't strike because we're doing climate science, which is what, um, which is what people are striking for. Um, and so that sort of felt good. But then I think a, a, a little while after that, I attended a talk by another, or by, by a climate scientist who, who said something along the lines of, this is like what are we what are we all doing the science is sort of there and uh what's what's really not here is um is the action and sort of also the systemic action so um that's sort of why i was particularly interested in uh joining ecar's green action uh team which um also partners it is also a Dainu circle and uh, the the sort of multi-generational but also really focused on systemic issues uh, was something that was really important to me and also I think there can just be tons and tons of information and uh, whenever we're confused about what exactly does the legislation even say um, it's really wonderful to be able to ask ask Vicky um, what's what's going on there. And so uh, I don't know if you can see the slide, but um, one of the things we're working on specifically is oil drilling. So maybe this is uh, a little blur blurry, but you can see uh, ECAR as a congregation meets here or meets at one of the stars, and then there's um, our office is at another star and uh, where we meet is on an oil field and uh, there's generally a lot of oil drilling in in Los Angeles and California in general so we've been working on or we worked on a state law with other Dainu circles um, also a city ordinance and now uh, a, um, an executive branch rule and luckily public comment was over Hanukkah so there was a really great event connecting uh, stopping oil drilling to to stopping um, uh, or to talking about oil at least and uh, yeah so so some other things is we we also do do fun uh, do bike things and we uh, do some gardening things we're gonna go on a hike for. Um, the holiday and look at trees um, and yeah yeah and then also participated in um, the hear the call action in Los Angeles and one of the co-leaders on, on my team really spearheaded that and another great thing we did was uh, hold a workshop at one of our meetings beforehand where we brainstormed ideas for signs uh, so you can see some of some of the signs here on on the right so 
yeah, it's, uh, I guess my, my, my advice for, for people or why, why it's so great to work with Dayenu is just that there's a lot of information and it can feel really hopeless to know what to do when there's a climate disaster and sort of having some direction and also having a group of other people who want to work with you can really um, bring a lot of hope when you're otherwise sort of disillusioned with the world. Thank you so much, Sophia. I really appreciate how both you and Lisa lifted up um, the community and the friendships and the relationships that you're building, right? And how um, how valuable that is for like keeping hope alive, right? And working through the challenges of, um, and in your case, you know, dealing with the science of this uh, day in day out. So thanks for your contributions there as well. Um, and so if um, if you can show the the slide again for folks to follow the Ecar Green Action Team. Um, on Twitter and on Instagram, they're at, at ecar green action on Twitter and the same um, ecar green action, but all lowercase on Instagram. Um, and love that show far, not show good sign um, from the high holidays last year, which actually went like sort of viral. It started popping up at different hear the call actions after people saw that. So that was awesome. Um, thank you, Sophia. Um, and now I'm excited to introduce Micah Lesh uh, from the Berkeley Hillel Dianu Circle. Micah is the director of Jewish life at uh, Berkeley Hillel um, and also one of the sort of earlier starters of a Dianu Circle and climate action on that campus. Um, hi, Micah. Hi, Vicki. Thank you so much for that introduction. Uh, also, I need to say that I'm also a huge fan of the show far, not show good sign. So kudos to y'all at ECAR for that. Um, my name is Micah, once again, Director of Jewish Student Life at Berkeley Hillel. If there are those in the, uh, on this webinar who don't know what a Hillel is, there's over 600 Hillels across the nation, <clears throat> all of which are housed at college campuses. They all look different. Some have spaces, some don't. Uh, we're blessed to have uh, a nice big building uh, just across the street from UC Berkeley. Um, so we serve primarily UC Berkeley students. Um, and I'll, I'll start my brief couple minutes here um, uh, with starting with sort of advice or just a general lesson because it's infused in sort of the story of our Dianu Circle, which is that I, in my experience, I found that it can be very intimidating to start a chapter of just about anything, whether you're doing any kind of advocacy or activism, because um, you feel as if you have to, I'll speak in my experience, you have to sort of envelop all of the issue and do all the things at once. Um, but our story, uh, sort of how, how Lisa prefaced her story of creating the, the Dianu Circle is that we've had a very circuitous route um, to creating a Dianu Circle and yet we've been pretty effective in doing so. So if you are a person who is thinking about creating a circle or wanting to do this kind of work, but you're scared to do it, you can do it in just about any angle possible in any way possible. And if you have the energy of people in a group who are excited to do something on this issue, odds are um, it'll work out. So uh, about two and a half years ago, uh, our rabbi um, or one of our rabbis on staff gave a drash or a sermon at our high holiday services about climate anxiety. Um, we have a therapist on staff and at the time they were finding that um, even at a competitive school like UC Berkeley, the anxieties that students were having weren't necessarily coming from the competition of school or from being in the classroom. Um, it was more so from the impending doom of the climate crisis, which, um, which is pretty staggering, especially for um, college students in this generation. Um, so we gave a, a pretty inspiring drosh that inspired the creation of what we then called the Climate Change Task Force, which is a collection of UC Berkeley students who wanted to do sort of some of the things you've been hearing about already um, do some local advocacy efforts, do some work greening our building. Um, there was a lot of energy there and then the pandemic hit and the energy fell off. Um, so uh, you can kind of see on this slide here, what we started to do uh, was default to what I would say a lot of Jewish organizations do and what Hillel's do is create a book club because <laughs> who doesn't love a book club? Um, so uh, we had a couple of climate change book clubs, read some wonderful works, including We Are the Weather by Jonathan Saffron Foer. Um, again, this was just an inspired group of students who were excited to talk and learn about the climate crisis um and that kept growing and growing and so we had staff leading that and then we had students leading that um and then at hillel what we have is called jlf or jewish learning fellowship that's something that exists at just about all hillels across the nation um and so my colleague emily and i created our own curriculum for a new jlf called tackling climate change where we um, infused uh, a lot of um Jewish texts with climate perspectives and sort of secular climate texts with Jewish perspectives and had conversations with students once a week for a full semester. Um, and all of this was happening, the group was sort of growing and growing. Um, and also while this was happening, I was hearing about Dayanu. I had been in touch with Vicky and other folks at, um, at the organization as it was starting. We in fact brought Vicky to speak to that fellowship as it was getting going. Um, so 
as that was happening, uh, a lot of these students were continued to excited to learn, but the energy was going in a place of action as opposed to learning. At this point, we had done book clubs, we had done a fellowship. Um, so we created what we called our social justice fellowship. Again, we're very big fans of the fellowship model at Hillel, um, wherein a um, large group of students meets once a week, learns from a different sort of social justice leader or activist locally in the Bay Area, and then they're actually placed at different organizations to do different advocacy work. So um, the action that we were doing started there, um, wherein students were placed at different climate organizations to participate um, in activism that was going on locally. Uh, a lot of big organizations that work on climate are in the Bay Area, including Sunrise Movement and Interfaith Power and Light, um, among many others. Um, and then that sort of birthed the Ardeanu Circle. Uh, again, lots of different groups, different things happening. Um, uh, if you're ever in a Hillel, you'll find that there's a million meetings happening at once, and somehow someone's always baking hala too. Um, so it embodies sort of our philosophy of doing lots of things at once, and all the energy sort of collectively came together in the past year to create this Ainu Circle. Um, and the group has done quite a lot since. We're, we're blessed to have um, uh, quite a bit of funding as well as partners in putting together um, sort of our flagship project of the Daniel Circle, which is our solar project. Um, about around March this year, we're aiming to have a whole solar array on our building, as well as a, a sustainable battery. Part of that came from a lot of power outages that we were hit with in Northern California during fire seasons last year. Um, uh, and then we participate in quite a lot of local advocacy efforts. So whether that's in Berkeley or, or the broader Bay Area, um, um, speaking on panels such as this one. Um, and then from a student perspective, one thing I'll say is that it's probably clear that I'm the only person on this panel who's working with explicitly with college students. Um, the what's been helpful and this sort of gets me into the advice component is that we now we have a student board where students have various jobs and they're in charge of different projects. We have two students whose job it is entirely to run our Dayanu circle um, and the HR in separate positions um, relating to different parts of running that circle. So um, that looks like quite a lot of events. You can see there's on the, the picture on the bottom part of the screen here, that was an event we hosted in collaboration with a great group called Food and Water Watch, as well as with Dainu, another local group called Urban um, But The event was called Climate Hanukkah, a just transition from the miracle of oil. So in addition to solar, we've also uh, dabbled in um, working in uh, around issues of oil and um, local ordinances and legislation around getting oil refineries out of our state. Um, so I'll end with, uh, in terms of, I think that well, similar to what I said at the top of this conversation is that um, if you're thinking about starting Daniel Circle, especially if you're on a college campus, we are one of, I believe, of just two Daniel Circles at Hillel's across the country. So that's not nearly good enough if you are at a Hillel or if you know someone at a Hillel on a college campus who's inspired about climate and is interested in being a Jewish space and motivate them to, to get in touch with Daniel to start a circle. Um, but the, the sort of last piece of advice I'd give is that, uh, again, it can be intimidating to start groups like this. It can be intimidating to do this work. Um, I've been in other sort of activists or uh, advocacy spaces, um, and there, I've, I've never had an experience like the one with Dayanu where I've had so much support from a national organization. Like I mentioned, Vicky spoke to our um, JLF Climate Change. We brought another staff member from Dayanu Muriel, who's absolutely wonderful to speak to our social justice fellowship. There's sort of constant support, not only in terms of people, but also resources. Um, I've never felt like I was doing this work alone. So um, my advice is to take advantage of partnerships and, and take advantages, take advantage of great organizations like Dayanu. Um, and all in there, excited to hear your questions later. Thank you so much, Micah. You all have taken on a ton and really set a great example for what's possible, um, particularly with the leadership of students across the country. Um, we have lots of questions coming in and we'll turn to those after we hear from one of our newest Dianu Circle, a leader of one of our newest Dianu Circles, uh, Cynthia Hirsch in Madison, Wisconsin. Hi, Cynthia. Hi, thank you, Vicki. Um, I'm quite honored to be included in this group, given that we are a new group in Madison, Wisconsin. I'm also honored to be included in this group because I represent the Midwest and I represent a smaller community. And I could see from the chat that many of you are also from smaller communities and from the Midwest. I will not call it flyover country. I hate that term. We are the solid, strong Midwest. Um, 
So in Madison, Wisconsin, our Dayanu Circle was really born out of a group called Joint Congregations for Social Justice, which represents the social justice leaders from all three of our synagogues. Madison, Wisconsin has only about 5,000 Jewish individuals, and we have three synagogues, um, one reconstructionist, one conservative, and one reform. You could have predicted that, right? And we were um, aware, we became aware of Dayenu, and we wanted to start a Dayenu circle that's community-wide. So we are not housed in any one of our synagogues. We are trying to be um, a circle that is part of our entire community. And in fact, um, someone who has joined our circle is a graduate student who's very closely affiliated with the University of Wisconsin Hillel. So I'm sorry, Micah, but we've decided to incorporate Hillel into our circle as well. We have a slightly different structure. We created a steering committee and our steering committee consists of seven individuals and we strive to have a variety of ages. So we have that graduate student, we have some young adults, and then we have old retired people like me. We also tried to have each of the congregations represented as well as an unaffiliated person or two. So we are trying to make our steering committee diverse in that sense, in an age and in a Jewish sense. In addition, we put together an advisory council and our advisory council consists of every rabbi in town and some of our friends who are professors or experts in, in climate related fields. Those are people who didn't feel they had the time to be working leaders in the steering committee, but that were happy to be on an advisory council and people that we will call on and ask for their advice, depending on what project we're working at. Our goal is to ultimately develop a much larger circle. Our goal is through email and contacts to have a group of people that are willing to take action, jump onto a petition, show up at an outdoor gathering, um, but aren't necessarily going to be the leaders or organizers of our circle. The, um, the, the hard work, the heavy lifting um, will be done by our steering committee. Um, we like, just as um, Lisa mentioned, really want to focus on the broad national policy initiatives. We acknowledge that each of our member synagogues have green teams of their own. So two of our synagogues, for example, have solar panels. Um, all of our synagogues are trying to replace the plastic at our kiddishes with real dishes and compost. And um, my synagogue in particular is very involved in a sustainable landscaping project. So those things are happening. Those things are underway. There are and There's energy for those projects in each of our synagogues. We really wanted to create a forum that addressed national policy and both state and federal legislation. And Dayenu is the perfect partner because Dayenu does that work and gives us the tools. And we're actually um, very impressed with how professional and resourceful Dayenu is. Um, I'm also reading the book, We Are the Weather by Jonathan Saffron Four. It's a great book, I recommend it. And one of his themes, is that we have to tell this story and we have to tell it in a way that's compelling. And sometimes the climate um, movement feels like it's just a lot of little pieces. And I think his push is really that we have to help people see that there's a much bigger picture and a much larger story out there to get um, inspired by. And I really feel like the Dayenu organization helps us do that. Um, I just wanna make two more points. One is we are partnering we're partnering with a local group called the Wisconsin Conservation Voters, which is a subgroup of the um, League of Conservation Voters, which is the national group. And the Wisconsin Conservation Voters really tracks local legislators and local legislation. So we, by partnering with them, will be aware of legislation at our state house that's pending that will have an impact on clean water, on um, agricultural runoff, on land use, things that are very, very important to us in Wisconsin. And we're also going to be able to focus on legislators' campaigns and whether or not we want to support local legislators that will vote for climate action legislation. And 
Second, we are also partnering with our sister chapter in Milwaukee. And I think there might be some Milwaukee people on this call. So I wanna give a shout out to the Milwaukee chapter. They have just been wonderful to us. We have had many conversations with them and we plan to be partnering with them on some pretty big projects coming up. Um, and with that, I just, again, want to say thank you. Thank you so much, Cynthia. I've really been impressed um, by your group, particularly the relationship building and the outreach and how you're structuring it and the vision for kind of how to network Jewish communities across Madison um, and with uh, secular partners and across um, the whole state of Wisconsin. So. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thanks. Um, we have some great questions in the chat um, and I've been taking some notes and I'm just going to, um, I think, tap different panelists to answer these questions. I think also to Cynthia's point about storytelling and sort of the power of narrative um, to bring people off the sign lines and into our movement. It is our personal stories and experiences that does that more so than the science, right? The science can be demobilizing, but personal stories of overcoming um, overcoming fear or worry to join with others um, is what often brings people off the sidelines. Um, let's start, we have a couple questions from Irma and from Barack um, about this question of sort of, we have a green team at our congregation, why affiliate with Dianu2 or what's the process of that? How did, what did that look like? And I think Lisa, you spoke to that a little bit. I wonder if you could address that and kind of how you manage different partnerships or affiliations. Sure. Um, I mean, I think that they're pretty different activities. Uh, you know, I think sort of taking care of, you know, our home or our congregation and being the best that we can do at that is, is um, you know, certainly something that people really care about. But, you know, for just speaking for myself, like Beth Elohim is in Park Slope, which is like a very well resourced neighborhood in New York City, which has a lot of neighborhoods that are not very well resourced. So for us to spend a lot of action like planting trees in our already beautiful park doesn't feel to me like it's the right way to repair our world, right? It's like maybe guarding our neighborhood, but it's not doing something that is bigger than us. And, it, and, um, and I think that we have a tremendous amount of potential to think like bigger than ourselves, to think about, I mean, certainly other Jews across the world, but all of all, everyone across the world and, and what's our collective responsibility to each other. And so, I mean, in the simplest way, I think the difference between a, a greening team and a Dianu circle is like where your focus is. Is it on sort of improving services, improving conditions here, or is it about changing policy that will affect a much wider community? And ideally they don't have to be opposed to each other, but um, I sort of have made that speaking of mistakes I've made I think one thing that I've done that hasn't been super inviting is to is to put those in opposition to each other so I'm trying to learn from from everyone how to how to line them up and draw strength from each other thank you Lisa uh, one thing I've I've also seen some circles do is um, in creating roles like leadership roles for different people in the circle is people can be point with different partner organizations or groups that you're affiliated with and then funnel that information to the core team for decision-making and planning. Um, I have a question now, I think for uh, both Sophia and Micah's circle worked on this campaign. I'll go to Sophia first, maybe just in the interest of time, um, but Mark D asked for examples of successful state or local action um, that a Dainu circle took on. And I'm hoping you can say a little bit more about um, the no drilling where we're living campaign you've been involved in. Yeah, I can I can start out. So um one, well, I, I guess I guess there there are we we like to celebrate small successes, even if it's not an eventual or like an extreme success. So so one of the things we've been working on is a local ordinance um that would ban oil drilling within 2,500 feet of, or sorry, ban new drilling within 2,500 feet of homes, schools, hospitals. It seems like kind of absurd that this doesn't happen, this hasn't happened already in California, and it's a big problem here and leads to a lot of asthma and uh, birth defects and other things like that. And so uh, we've it, it's passed through different parts of the city council 
And so right now it's up to the the sort of final hurdle uh, for for the ordinance to be written. And so we were really excited that it got through the budget committee. We made some calls for that. And then um, also, uh, so we partner with a group called Stand LA. And uh, as as uh, mentioned for, for the state, there's a, the organization CalGEM has said they would have a rule for a long time and finally did give a rule and then there was public comment on that rule and uh so the fact that that rule happened is really exciting um though it hasn't yet been enacted so i think uh learning to to celebrate intermediate victories is really good as well huge yes thank you that's great um organizing advice in addition to um, some storytelling about the local efforts in Los Angeles and California. Um, there are more questions in the Q&A than we're gonna be able to answer uh, live here, but we'll save those and make every effort to respond to your questions. And I'm gonna ask all of our panelists now, if you're able to like type, if you see a question that you can answer and type an answer in the Q&A uh, form, that would be really helpful. Um, I'm going to, before we uh, wrap up with our um, upcoming opportunities and next steps, I'm gonna try to answer a few questions that I noticed that I think I can knock out pretty quickly. Um, so thank you, Ivy, for your question. Um, Ivy says that they're disabled and they wanna participate, um, uh, but doesn't have the capacity to lead or start a group right now. Um, you are so welcome. We need you, we need, we need everybody in the movement. This is not just for how to start a dying circle, but also how to join one. Um, I want everybody to know that we have um, a Dianu circle directory where Cynthia, Micah, Sophia, and Lisa's circles plus, you know, the 60 plus Dianu circles are listed, including with contact information of who to reach out to. Um, and that is at dianu.org slash circles. Um, and I'm going to ask if someone could put that link in the chat. It's just dianu.org slash circles, but put the HTTPS in front. Uh, so people can click on it, <laughs> please. Um, and I've responded to a few questions of, is there a circle near me here? Take a look at that and drop an email to um, Dianu Circles in your region. Uh, Alan D asked, are there any Dianu Circles in West Virginia uh, where there's a particular Senator that uh, needs some constituent and other pressure? Um, there isn't a Dianu circle right now in West Virginia, though we are in touch with uh, Jewish and interfaith leaders in that state who are really doing all they can <laughs> to influence uh, Senator Manchin. Um, you know, we've been looking at where are our strengths as a Jewish community and as a Dianu community and really focusing on, as Lisa shared, um, you know, our relationships and our community power uh, towards Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer. Um, and I think it's been demonstrated that um, Lisa and her Dianu Circles efforts and all of our efforts have been instrumental in um, giving Senator Schumer chizuk, strength, courage um, to keep fighting, to call a vote in the Senate on the Build Back Better Act. Um, and all of that pressure actually puts indirect pressure on um, some of these senators that are uh, that appear to be standing in the way. Um, so that's all. That's a great organizing principle: is organize or organize the resources that we have strategically um, to make an impact. Um, and here's one. Actually, I'll, I'll open this up to um, to anyone to answer. Maria asks, and um, we have people in our congregation who don't think we should take a political stand. How should we address that? And I wonder if any of you have have encountered that and could address it. Maybe just one person to speak up. Cynthia, I see you. Well, I'll give it a try. Um, I think that the angle is that this is consistent with Jewish values. It does, you know, it doesn't have to be political. Perhaps there might be very controversial legislation that your group would back away from. But the fact of the matter is being a steward of the earth, taking care of the earth that God gave us is a Jewish value. And, um, you know, Torah and Midrash is filled with those sorts of um, commandments, really. And I think that that would be the basis for arguing that this is important work to do um, and that it's not necessarily political or doesn't have to be political. 
Thank, Thank you, you so that. much. Great Can answer. I just add one thought, which is that, I mean, that question came up a bunch of times in the chat. And just to give you, I'm going to put Vicki on the spot and say like one advantage of being a Dianu circle is that you can call Vicki up with that question and they, and Dianu National will like put together a resource for you. It's already implicit in a lot of the materials they have, but that is the, that is a kind of strategic help that, that will benefit many of us that we can get from the national to bring to our local circles. Thank you. Thank you both for that. Thank you all so much. Um, before we wrap up, we need some next steps, opportunities, how to get involved. Um, and I'm delighted that Sarah Rockford is here to tell us about that. Hi, Sarah. Hello. Can you see me and hear me? Yeah. Excellent. Oh my gosh. I'm so thrilled to be here. Um, I feel energized and excited by these events when I see all of these participants. Um, and I'm so inspired by the volunteers and local leaders who make this organization run and who animate it. Um, so next steps, there's a lot coming up. We're doing a lot. Um, one of the things I think our organization does extremely well is to support circles um, with a robust set of resources and with people power um, one of the ways we offer support to all of you is by running trainings to help folks hone and develop the skills they need to be effective organizers fighting for climate justice. Um, and so this year we are sponsoring a cohort of 20 to 30 people from new and prospective dying new circles, people like you. Um, to participate in a crash course in community organizing. It's called Don't Fetch Organize, which I love. Um, and the course is run by our partners at Join for Justice. Join for Justice is a Jewish organization that focuses on training organizers and their communities to affect change on issues that they care about. Uh, Don't Fetch Organize will run for seven weeks from February 14th to April 3rd. And during the course, you'll dive deep into the fundamentals of social justice and community organizing and explore how these relate to Jewish tradition. Uh, it hardly bears saying at this point, but the trainings will take place over Zoom. And this course usually costs about $300 per participant, but we're really proud to be able to sponsor a cohort at no cost to our participants though donations are welcome. If you're interested in launching a Dianu Circle, this is a fantastic place to start. You'll get the chance to dive into some intensive learning in community with other Dianu folks who are working on the same issues and projects as you. Um, I'm really excited about it. I hope you will consider it as uh, one of the steps that you take um, in engaging with Dianu. Uh, so how do you find more information? How do you sign up? Tomorrow, Wednesday, January 12th at 3 p.m. Eastern time, we are running an info session about the course where you can learn more about the work and training and ask questions. If you are interested, but maybe that timing of the info session doesn't work out for you, we are happy to send out the recording afterwards. Um, and I want to flag that we have a really quick turnaround on this opportunity. The deadline to register for the course is Monday, January 24th. So if you are interested, please be in touch. Um, after the session here, we'll send you some more information about the course. So don't worry, you don't have to capture all the details right now. Um, and we'll use the email address that you use to register for this session. I will drop my email in the chat and I'm very happy to answer questions about Don't Fetch Organize. So please don't hesitate to be in touch. Um, I hope to see you tomorrow at the info session, at the training and beyond as you think about launching a Dianu Circle in your community. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much, Sarah. And I also dropped into the chat the link to RCP um, for that info session tomorrow. Um, I'll also share here as we wrap up um, our Dianu Circle interest form that I invite everybody here to fill out. If you came away from today thinking, yeah, I think this is something we'd like to get started in our community, uh, fill out that form so we can uh, be in touch with you. 
Um, and then stay tuned. Um, we're planning a new campaign launch in February of this year and actions in the spring. Um, the moment is now for climate action. Um, the potential is limitless if we organize together within and across our, all of our communities. Uh, please also follow Dianu um, online on social media at join Dianu on most social media platforms. Join the conversation there. And thank you all participants for being here today. And thank you to our speakers and our panelists, to Lisa, to Micah, to Sophia, Cynthia, and Sarah. Um, it's been a delight. I've learned so much being here with you today. Have a wonderful afternoon, everybody, and stay safe and healthy, please. Take care.